Welcome to LAVO's VSM video training series on panel building. In this video, we'll explore what sources and targets are routed to each other by name, how to create button legends, and also how to undo signal routes. One of the nice features of VSM is the real-time ability to see the routing that you're doing. If you are actually connected to a facility, the actual router would give you feedback, and the button changes you see on your panel would reflect that feedback from the router status changes. But we still have a challenge. For example, when we click on camera 1, we don't actually know what source is routed to camera 1. Yes, we can go into our primary virtual matrix and sort of cheat and look at it that way, but wouldn't it be nice to have the legend on the panel itself? So actually, we already know what's routed into camera 1 because we manually selected CCU1 into camera 1 in our primary virtual matrix in the previous video. But you may not always have that insight. Let's look a little more deeper into the primary virtual matrix and understand better about the cross points shown in the primary virtual matrix. Notice here these little yellow arrows pointing up at each cross point intersection between CCU and camera. That's because it's a physical source routed into a virtual destination. Now let's see what happens when we route the CCU into a physical device, like a frame synchronizer. First, let's scroll our primary virtual matrix in such a way that we can see where CCUs and frame syncs line up. And now, take the frame sync target and connect it to CCU1. Notice in our primary virtual matrix, a blue dot has been created between CCU1 and frame sync1. That's because it's a cross point between two physical devices. Blue dots mean physical connections at both ends of the connection. There's other colors used within the primary virtual matrix that you will encounter, including purple, which is used for tie lines, or red, which is used for locked signal paths. So back to the operator usability for the panel here. Unless the operator themselves makes the source and destination route, they won't automatically know what the source is feeding that. But with VSM, we can fix that. VSM has buttons called Display Source and Display Target, and they can be found in our toolbar when the panel editor window is active. Let's choose to place a Display Target button on the middle of our panel. Here's the button. Now we simply change the tool type on our mouse and then click in an empty button location on our panel, and there's our Display Target button. Let's also do the same thing with Display Source. We'll put that next to the display target button. And notice, of course, that the display target button is on the right, closer to the targets, and the display source button will be on the left side of the center section of navigation, closer to the sources. These buttons are very handy because they act as displays and show what is currently connected. The button's behavior is displayed dynamically, which means you don't have to do anything else. Once you place the button, it's set to go. In VSM parlance, FrameSync 1, highlighted here, would be called the selected target. As you can see from the Display Source button, the currently connected source to FrameSync 1 is FrameSync 10. As we change our sources into FrameSync 1, you'll see the display change to reflect the change of the sources. For instance, CCU 10 is now feeding FrameSync 1. You'll notice that as we navigate between pages, the designation on display source and display target don't change. That's handy when you're changing pages. But there's a problem with this. Even though on the right side, our target side, we're not selecting any destinations, if we change something on the source side, we're automatically changing whatever is routed into FrameSync 1. This could be dangerous. We don't want that behavior. For example, when we select the servers, and server output 1. Now that is feeding FrameSync 1. This is happening because we did not deselect FrameSync 1. So what can we do to prevent this? Well, it just so happens in our Destination Button Properties windows we have a tab called Extras. And in this tab you notice a checkbox option called Deselect Active Target or Component. Let's select that. Now notice what happens. On the Target button we have a little red box now with a small X inside of it. Now, let's change another navigation in our target section and see what happens. As you can see, the display target window and display source windows no longer have information assigned to them. This means that currently we have no selected targets. However, we don't have that functionality everywhere yet. For example, let's click on frame syncs. 
and select one of the frame sync targets. And now we select cameras. Notice that frame sync 3 is still the selected target. So a good practice with the VSM Studio is to go into the properties window for each of these target buttons and check the deselect active target or component item. There's actually no reason to worry about this on the source side and therefore no reason to deselect this on the source side. Now notice on this display source button, we have quite a bit of information here. It says here that frame sync 3 is receiving a signal from frame sync 8. But we don't normally need all that additional information such as frame sync 3 because we already know it by our display target button just to the right. So let's go up to the display source button on the button panel editor and click on the object in the lower left corner of the button. This is contextual information based on the type of button that we're clicking on, and in this case, we see that we have four options. Let's add a check next to the display signal path picture. Now, only the picture that's been assigned to the source will display on this display source button, which will make it easier to read. Now, notice as we change through some of the sources, only the source is shown on this button. So now we've added the display source and display target buttons, but maybe the operator of this panel doesn't really know what those two buttons are showing them. Let's add a couple of labels under our button panel. These labels will not be navigation tools, they will simply be static displays of words that we're about to create. Let's go back to the button toolbar and grab the generic tool to our mouse tip, and then click next to our navigation button and add a label that displays the display target beneath the label. Let's go to edit bitmap and add a couple of lines of text. First we type in the words connect and source. You'll find that you have to get fairly creative in abbreviating some words to fit them onto your button. We can also move around the text with our mouse on this grid. And also we can use our mouse to draw in some artwork manually on the button. We have to select the radio button image to actually add the image onto the surface of this label. Generally you don't want to get too complicated with your artwork but it could be helpful to add an arrow or something like that on a button surface. With time, your drawing skills may get pretty good with VSM. If you add some pixels to your artwork that you don't like, just click on them again and they'll go away. So here we have a couple of labels for both our selected source and selected target buttons that are persistent and tell the operator what is beneath them. Let's add another function. Let's say that you've just done a route, but you didn't mean to. Whoops! Well that's okay, we can create something like an undo button. Here's how. Over here in our toolbar we have what's called the source of target button. Let's place that in the central navigation section of our panel. Once we place the button, let's click in the lower left corner of the button and notice there are three options. Let's select the Display Previous option at the bottom of this drop-down menu. This button will remember what the previously selected source was for the currently selected target. If you don't change the currently selected target, this button therefore will display what the previous source was attached to this target. So when we look at the target, Frame Sync 1, we see that the current source is Frame Sync 4, and that the previous was Server 1, Output 1. So now, if we select Server 1, Out 1, that will be reassigned to Frame Sync 1 like it was previously. And notice, now Frame Sync 4 is the previous source. You can go back and forth with this. This is effectively your Undo button.